What's up everybody? I am doing another cool video and I like to bring you more than just vans. I wanted to bring you a, I guess a tiny home, right? Yeah. Okay. Camp trailer. I'm, <laughs> yeah, camp trailer. Uh, this is Robert and he is the designer builder of this really cool A-frame camp trailer, what he calls it. And we're gonna get all the information first time you've ever built anything yep and we're gonna kind of go into all of that because i'm super impressed by it can i lift this up oh yeah go ahead this is his instagram uh folder which is phenomenal and i actually love this man for this so we're gonna talk a lot about how he came up with all this stuff well, here we go hello robert hey how are you doing well i kind of put you on blast there so i'm sorry <laughs> no worries um you have this really cool a-frame house you're gonna explain to everybody why the A-frame, but you also, I'm gonna call myself out, you proved me wrong, because I've said for a long time there's no way to put an A-frame on a trailer, and you did it. I did. So what was your reasoning of doing an A-frame on a trailer? Yeah, so um, I hate I-70 ski traffic deeply, and with a apparently $6,000 6, passion, so. Uh, <laughs> Is that what this cost? About, yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, I wanted something that I could ski out of, wouldn't have to pay for a hotel, could kind of park anywhere, like not super long, could pull behind a Jeep Grand Cherokee without too many issues. And you know, uh, if you want to go for, if you want to see what architecture works, you usually should check, you know, what people are building in the environment you want to be in. And A-frames in the mountains are as old as like time itself because it sheds snow, it's got a minimal wind profile. I mean, even on the road, the wind, when it hits the side, pushes it into the road. Um, makes it really stable, really easy to travel. The gable eaves don't help, but they look great, so I put them on anyways. You kind of need them though for the space inside. It's true, it's, yeah. You said it already cost you six grand, which I actually rarely talk about pricing, but with DIYs, I love talking pricing. Six grand, what does it weigh? It's just a little under 2,000 pounds. And the, the dimensions? Uh, it's sh I believe it's 12 by seven, but it might be 10 by seven. It's been so long since I dealt with the frame. Okay, well, how long did it take you to build if it took so long? Um, about a year and a half. It was a full-time job, and so this was like off hours or if I didn't feel like, or if I got my work done <laughs> okay, and then had some free time, then I would do it during the... So you came up with the mathematical calculations. By the way, you have your friend sitting right here that may have helped you <laughs> with this. Emotionally. Okay, emotionally. emotionally. Um, you guys are sitting over here doing math as I walked past you a second ago. Yeah, well... <laughs> We had a fun problem that we were trying to... Very fun problem. And is that what you're just trying to do in your free time? No, I usually play piano in my free time or ski. This is awesome. I, I love that you play piano. You actually are also a teacher of piano, right? I, I mean, I guess I taught my friend like once or twice, but mostly I just, I'm an accompanist. Okay. So I play for choirs or I've played at Howl at the Moon down in Denver, which is like a dueling piano bar. I love Howl at the Moon. Yeah, it's you good. can't go wrong. He's really good it on got, piano. He's oh, yeah? a great singer too. And a good singer. Yeah. That, that lives in a ski lodge. Yeah, I mean... It's two things I like to do, it's music and ski, and so. I asked you for your Instagram when I first met you because I was like, I want to tag you, I want to kind of promote you, and you you said to me, what? Yeah, I don't I don't really have one. I <laughs> technically have one, but it's just for like friends and family, so I don't really, yeah. So really you did this, out. and the, why I love everything about you, Robert, is you did this for the love of the work. Yeah. You I, weren't trying to get clout, you were just like, I want to do this cool stuff. Yeah, I really like architecture, and I really don't want to drive in I-70 ski traffic, so. I-70 ski traffic. So, do you know the dimensions or the pitch of the roof offhand, or are we going to have to remember um, this? It's about, it's almost exactly an equilateral triangle, so the walls, I mean, these uh, plates are eight feet, and I didn't need to cut them, so on the inside, it's about seven feet, and on the outside, it's, it's right around eight feet. I'll get B-roll of this, but uh, I'll flip through and... You kind of made sketches and you yeah it was kind of just a, a labor of love yeah yeah it, it definitely was um and speed because you know i was building it in my parents driveway there's an hoa and you know we don't want them coming around and being like why is someone building a crack dungeon in your driveway uh what is the material so we got a metal roof yeah so just a steel roof and then um this is just wood uh pick it up at lowe's a lot of the outside is pre-treated, um, just kind of like siding wood because you know, you're going for something that's durable and not super expensive. Uh, it's not the lightest, which sucks, but I made up for weight on the inside because I'm using like much lighter materials on the inside. And you got this, we're gonna walk in in a second, but you got this door that seems a little miniature, <laughs> but it can fit me and you. Yeah, it's, um, this is kind of the only spot you can put the door. And it's really actually not very bad to get in because the way you step up, your head kind of automatically ducks under the... Very true. Um, but getting out, people with hats, you don't see the top of the door and 
I think I've caused a few concussions today. <laughs> okay, we're at yeah. a festival for people that are understanding where we are. Um, so yeah, let's step on in, and you step in first, so uh, so I can stand out here and kind of give us the rundown of your kitchen. Now, normally the the door would be shut for everybody, but I'm assuming this is where you do your bulk of your cooking. Yep, yep. You just uh, I got I got pans and cooking implements down there. This is a nice little combo stove. Where'd you here. get that thing? That thing is cool. Yeah, I got it online. I believe it's called Camp Chef. Um, I was looking for something in this color because I was trying to make the, I had a color scheme I was trying to go for. And it's great because you can, uh, it's basically just on these tie downs. Because to be quite honest, it's not that pleasant to cook in here because it's kind of a closed space, but you can just take off these tie downs, lift it up and cook outside if you want. If it's howling outside and, you know, frigid, you can still cook in here. And since it was designed for the winter, you know, that kind of needs to be a thing. So you were designed for the winter. Do you have a heater in here? Not yet. I, I'm debating it. I'll probably get one. Um, the moisture issues are kind of annoying, but I mean, I've slept in it at like negative 20 and like... It was, it was, I mean, it wasn't warm, but it was fine. <laughs> it wasn't um, warm, but it was fine. Yeah, I've, I've had, had colder days on motorcycles, so yeah. You, uh, that's actually, I want to talk about that for just one second. You traveled around on a motorcycle yeah, for months. I, I spent like two months living off of a motorcycle out of college, tooling around the western states, going to a bunch of national parks, and, you know, sleeping like a, like a vagrant. <laughs> <laughs> like a vagrant. Okay, cool. I mean, hey, man, everybody's going to do it. Um, you have obviously these really cool lights, man. I, your design was just super rad to me. Thanks. Uh, what do you have powering your lights and also talk to me about lighting and all that other stuff? Um, it's a pretty minimal power system because I'm only running like two outlets, um, LED lights, a fan over top of the range. Um, and so I only got two hundred watt panels and then I got a hundred amp hour battery, the AGM because it gets, I mean, it gets really cold. It's made to get really cold. Um, so you're not running lithium solely because it it does bad in cold weather. Yeah, I've heard that it has issues in cold weather, and this is going to be sitting in like incredibly cold temperatures for like days on end. And you sometimes can I'll be put sitting. in yeah, you can put an AGM battery in snow, and it'll be fine. Yeah, that would that would yeah, that's kind of it needs to be kind of cold bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you haven't had any problems recharging it and having it as a full on battery. No, not really. No, cool. Works great. And then the lights are. I mean, I was trying to go for the inside kind of reflects the outside colors but like more muted so it's a little bit more livable you have the red and like you have outside um you have the kind of this is the wood tone is kind of a toned down yellow and then the green all the metal like you see outside is also green on the inside um cool. so i got these like metal enamel light um that one i think was from france and then that one was from germany and they weren't that expensive because i got them off of ebay for like you know dirt cheap because people didn't want them and i am gonna step in with you if that's cool. okay yeah go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna stand in looks like these little eaves you got yeah the little dormers little dormers they're pretty rad this is it guys but again robert you're by yourself yeah yeah it's just me because i drive it's up warm in here it's yeah. nice it's kind of chilly outside it's really it is, nice it is great in the winter it, it keeps us heat yeah that's the overhead fan and it's just a couple of pc fans that <laughs> it's awesome toss man. in there you always have your sink got the sink uh, you gotta have a bookshelf. Gotta have a bookshelf. Just have to. Yeah. <laughs> and you did it right. Yeah. Uh, gotta carry books around. I love my adventure books, and then also I'm running out of bookshelf storage in my room, so started tossing the adventure books out here along with some, you know, <laughs> philosophy and. Look at you, smart man with your fire extinguisher, because you just never know. Yeah, that's the it's insurance for my own stupidity. <laughs> um, and then your bed is gonna be like, okay, well, everybody, uh, nobody can fit there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the bed's the bed's much better than it looks. Let me just toss this. You're going to do the bed for us? Yeah, I'll pull the bed out. It doesn't take very long. So what's the ta What's the reasoning behind the table right there? Um, well, I can put a chair right there and sit, and it's really comfy, and I can look out the windows and, you know, see the views. But also, it does sit atop the bed, so it's like a flat surface right at bed level. So if I have the bed out, I can put it down and, like, actually put food on it or a laptop and, you know, type away in terrible posture. <laughs> I can't believe you did all this, man. Ugh. We're gonna run out of a little bit of space. Yeah, we are, but that's all. okay. Yeah. This is not meant for two people. Well, I mean, it could be, but it could be. You could fit two people in here. It'd be, it'd be not tight. while filming. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what is the bed length right now? Seventy-five inches. Wow. It's a full-length bed. It's, it's yeah. Here, I'll lay back on it so you can see. It's pretty comfortable. Quite comfy. Look at that. That is rad. So you just obviously put that, you know, when you want to go to bed or whatever, and you yep. can have your, where I'm standing is your kitchen and yep. lounge area. 
And this is your getaway ski lodge. Yep. Wow, man. I'm super impressed. I love A-frames. Obviously, if you had a bigger footprint, you'd have like a loft and a whole mine and all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah, yeah. There'd be the hot tub. <laughs> the hot tub. Somewhere <laughs> and... Maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next, maybe next time. time. Maybe next maybe time. Next time. Um, well, we're going to step to the outside, and we're just going to show off the rest of the, the tiny, and, and we'll cool. kind of go from there. Is that all right? Sounds good to me. Nice. People are going to probably ask what that is. What, is this the name of your tiny? Yeah, um, kind of nerdy. Um, Nothing but, nerdy about it, my man. I yeah. love it. It's a Greek mythological figure, also one of my favorite Keats poems, and a great sci-fi book. Um, but it's How do you a, pronounce it? Endymion. Endymion. Um, Greek people will probably be like, you pronounced it terribly. Um, <laughs> but uh, That's okay. You're, yeah. you're not on social media. You won't get attacked. <laughs> the last thing, well, I'm going to walk around to the front with you. And it looks like you even put window covers here that are just yeah. how you're supposed to do it. So, yeah, everything was built for, you know, low temperatures, high winds, up in the, you know, 12,000 feet yeah. at the base of Loveland or Keystone or wherever you're at. And so, you know, if it gets really bad, you can close the windows down. Actually, you can still have the windows open, but the shutters closed so that you're not getting that, but you're still getting some airflow. Have you closed that? Uh, yes. it, well, yeah. When yeah, you're I've, up. I've closed that when I've been out and about. When it was negative 20, I closed these because I just needed all the insulation yep. I could get. How long have you been skiing for? Oh, my parents were ski yeah, patrollers. So like, these... Your whole life? Yeah, since I could walk. So you've been, you're a pretty professional skier. I mean, there are definitely skiers better than me, um, but uh, yeah, I am. I am I'm very good at skiing. Well, I'm on volunteer patrol at a mountain here, so... Are you really? Yeah, so I get a free pass and then I ski. That's the other thing is like, in order to, you know, patrol for the day, you got to get up there for the morning meeting. And in high season, if you're leaving from where I live, you have to leave at like 4.30. This, I just park it up at one of the exits before where I'm going and I wake up at 7, get to the meeting at 7.30 super early and just feel super well rested. And while everybody else is trolling in, exhausted, I'm like, wow really nice <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah. mean again I cannot compliment you enough on how cool it is to have an a-frame on a trailer uh, maybe in the future maybe a diesel heater or I don't know what you're thinking maybe yeah either a diesel heater or uh, one of the uh, catalytic heaters catalytic heaters yep yeah it's that moisture is be an issue I mean the simplest option would be just the mummy sleeping bag and just yep. put it on top of the bed depends on how uncomfortable I get if I get $500 uncomfortable this winter, then I'll probably splurge for some nice heating setup. But if I don't, I'll probably just stick with a sleeping bag. And what you said to me yesterday, which was great, was I have a long summer to figure it out. Yeah, I do. Well, Robert, thank you so much for showing everybody your uh, true tiny. This thing is awesome. A tiny little A-frame. Tiny little A-frame, I love it. Uh, thanks again, I would love, this is normally the part that I would have your social media shot up, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you're you're in the Colorado area, so maybe you're going to uh, be at more of these festivals. Uh, yeah, maybe. And then, I mean, if you drive up skiing, you might see me. <laughs> uh, Robert, thanks a lot, man. Do you want to say anything? Words of encouragement? Uh, I mean, if you want to do it, just just do it. Uh, I, it's, it's super fun. If you want to do it, just do it. I love that attitude. Thanks, man. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely.